So, oops, we are grabbing. Are you grabbing a whole time? No, no, not exactly. Shh. Y equals square root of x. Okay, so we're going to figure out what these graphs look like today. I don't, this is, I think this is going to be a lot easier. Some of you might not like graphing, but this will probably be a lot easier than yesterday's, I imagine. Famous last words. Okay. Now, how do I figure out, if I've never seen the graph before, how do I graph something like this? Uh, We've done it before. No. Not necessarily. No. I'm not asking what the graph looks like. I'm asking how do we figure out what the graph looks like. Plug stuff in. Plug stuff in. Is the correct answer. Good job, dude. Good. Okay, what number should I plug in? It kind of doesn't matter. Can I plug in zero into this? Does that work? Yeah. Can I plug in one? Yes. Can I plug in negative one? Yes. No. Plug in only positive zero. Right. Negative square root of negative. Oh. It's not that funny. Hush. Square root of negative one is imaginary. Square root of negative anything is imaginary, right? So I don't. I don't want to plug in anything negative. So that means, by the way, and we're going to have to say this later, that the domain, the smallest thing that I can plug in is zero. So the domain is anything x values greater than or equal to zero. And okay, you said the domain is what? Greater than or equal to zero. Oh, I wrote it wrong. I should put domain equals x greater than or equal to zero. Something like that. And how, what's the greater than symbol mean? Right here. You just wrote it down. Okay, so I could plug in 2, but you guys know what the problem with 2 is? Well, the square root of 2 is weird. Oh, crap. And that's fine, but you, you can do it. So you might want to plug in something like 4, because why is 4 better? Because 4 actually has a square root. Let's go ahead and do this. So if I plug in 0 for x, what do I get? Zero. If I plug in one, if I plug in two, you have to use your calculator. It's like 1.4. Okay. If I plug in four, two. Okay. So zero, zero. Now, is there going to be anything going on over here? No. No, because the lowest x value we can use is zero. That means from here to the right. Nothing's happening over there. One, one. 2, 1.4, where's that? It's almost one and a half. And then 4, 2, so I skipped over 3. 4, 2 is right there. Alright, what does this shape look like? A curve. Yeah. It's going up slower and slower and slower. It's kind of like... A parabola, except for it's rotated, it's turned it just keep going sideways, up? and there's not really anything down there. So, so it's not like a curve. Is this number one? one? No. It's kind of like a missile. Launch. I don't think so. Is it? No. Oh, that's interesting. It does. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like today. What's the domain? X greater than or equal to zero because this can't be negative. What's the range? I think there is a range today. Yeah. Yeah. What, what oh, y values are covered by this one? What's the lowest y value? Zero. Zero. What's the highest y value? Zero. Okay, it's unlimited. It's go, it goes up slower and slower, but it does go up forever. So the range would also, on this one, be y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, this is not number one, though. This is just what every problem is going to look like, something like this. All right, now, speaking of number one, let's try number one. Number one's not graphing, by the way. Uh, we don't start graphing till nine. Oh, okay, so I did actually just do number nine. I'll come back, I'll show you guys that again. Did anybody graph that already? Just put a little nine by it, if you did. Did you erase it? <laughs> No. no. Okay, number one says find the domain of the function. 
All right, the only thing that we have to look at is we can't let anything inside the square root be zero, or sorry, be negative. So what can x be? It's just like the last one we did. What can the x value be then? Anything bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, this four doesn't matter. I just can't have a square root of a negative, right? So zero or bigger is gonna work. And that's it, it's short and sweet. Number three, this one, a little trick here. Okay, here's the trick that we're gonna use. You take whatever is in the square root and just write this, x minus four greater than or equal to zero. Did we literally just do that for everything? Well, not, well, you still have to solve for x, though. How do I solve this for x? We need this to be greater than or equal to zero, right? So that means x has to be greater than or equal to four. Because if you plug in like three, you'll get a negative, or two, or so. It's got, so anyway, this is the answer. Domain equals that. What if there's a number in front of the x? Well, same thing. Do the same thing. But there's a number in front of the x, so what then you would have to divide two. both you. Yeah. And you can't divide okay. zero. Number five is the same as number one. Do you guys see it? What's different between three and five? Or on three on five the seven is not under the square root, so it doesn't affect whether the square root square root is negative or not. So what's the domain on number five? Zero. Greater zero. than or equal to zero. Some of you, when you're like using uh, like a math app on the on your phone, the answer will look like this a lot of times. Um, don't do that. I'm not going to give credit for it. Okay, even though it's right, if you it's a different kind of notation. It just means that it goes from zero to infinity. But we're just we're writing it like this instead. So this, if you write this, I know you're just copying off your phone, basically. Number seven. There's other ways I know you're copying off. All right. And number seven is that. So all you do is you take whatever's in the square root, just like number three, and we want it to be greater than or equal to zero. So how do I solve this for x? Divide by negative one. Divide by negative one. What happens when you divide by negative? Oh, the, signs. the inequality switches. So this one, what's zero divided by negative one? Negative zero. No such thing. Zero. Zero, zero divided by anything. Zero is neither negative nor positive. Um, and if you think about it, it makes sense. So zero would work, but you you could plug in like x is negative one because that's less than or equal to zero. You get negative, negative one. It's positive one. Anyway, only negatives work when you plug it in on this number seven. Does that kind of make sense? We only did a couple examples, but so like on eight, all you do is you take that x minus two under the square root and set it greater than or equal to zero. That's it, just under the square root. Okay, number nine. The radical, under just under the radical, has to be greater than or equal to zero, just like we did on three and seven. Just set it greater than or equal to zero. Number nine I already did. I don't know if I want to do it again. Um, let's make the rule three points. You have to have at least three points. So really quickly, what three x values would be the easiest to use? Zero, four. Zero, one, four. Why those? Now, I don't care if you use 
a number that doesn't have a square root, it'll just be a decimal, that's fine. But if you don't have to plug it in the calculator, you can just use these. This is number nine. This was my example at the beginning because it's the basic graph. But if you plug in zero, you get zero. If you plug in one, square root of one is one. If you plug in four, square root of four is two. So zero, zero, one, one, four, two. Oh, does it say something about the domain of numbers, doesn't it? I said this at my first example, but what was the domain? X is greater than or equal to zero. Everything to the right of X equals zero. And then what's the range? Same. Yes. Y values start at zero going up. So range equals Y greater than or equal to zero. Domain is x values. The lowest x value is zero. It goes to the right forever. Is it where the arrow is pointing? Yeah. Why is it? Arrow just means it keeps going that way. That's all it means. So, but I mean, if the arrow is pointing right, does that mean that the sign between the x and the zero is going to be the way that the arrow is pointing? Mm, not really. I mean, the graph also goes up forever. Yeah. So, kind of, kind of not. says x to the one half. What does the one half power actually mean? Mm -hmm. Where does x plus three? What do you guys think that plus three is going to do the graph? It's just going to move up three. Okay, what, uh, what would be some good x values to plug in? Zero, one, and four. Same thing, because we got the square root of x again. So we want zero, one, and four, because they have square roots, so it makes it easier. Um, If we plug in zero, we get zero plus three. If we plug in one, square root of one is one, plus three, four. Four, square root of four is two, plus three. All right, so zero, three, one, four, four, five. So yes, it did move the graph up three. All right, what is the domain? What X values are we using? Zero to infinity. So. X is greater than or equal to zero. What range are we using? What's the lowest Y value? Three. Three. And it goes up forever over here. Y is greater than or equal to three. You could, but square root of 2 is a weird decimal, so. Okay. Yeah. Be 4 instead? 4 has an easy square root. Also, for the domain range thing, is that where it starts out? So the R is where the Y starts out? So, X values describe left to right movement. Yes. So the lowest X value is 0, the biggest X value is infinity. It goes for it. The Y values describe down and up. The lowest Y value is 3, and it goes up forever. So that's why, so if it's like, 
If we're the starting point that this was four, it'd be Y. This if this was up one, it'd be greater than or equal to four. Okay. So pretty much before you start that up? Yeah. Okay. Thirteen. X plus one. Hmm. Does anybody want to guess how this is going to affect the graph? The plus one in the square root? Use cube or square. Gracie says she thinks it's going to move left. But Gracie, B, Crazy. All right. Let's see. <laughs> what is what's the smallest x value I could use here? Negative one. Yeah, I want x plus one to be at least zero, so that means I need x to be at least negative one. So negative one would be a good starting point. Negative one plus one is zero. Uh, do you guys know another number that would give me a nice result? Zero. Yeah, if I plug in zero, zero plus one is one, and one has a square root. Three. Four also has a square root, so what x value do I need to make Three. this Three. to make this equal four? Three. Okay, you don't have to use these numbers. As long as the graph looks right, it's fine. But these numbers are going to give us easy answers. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 1 plus, or sorry, this is wrong. 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So this is starting at negative 1, 0 right there. Then 0, 1, and 3, 2. Was Gracie right? Yeah, she was. I moved left 1. So when you put a plus 1 directly on the x, it actually moves the graph left 1. So negative would be over the right 1. Yes. Kind of the way I think of it is everything happens one sooner, like 1 to the left. It's just like the other problems we did. Yeah, we've done stuff like this before. That's why I asked if you guys could guess what was going to happen. Okay, we did the main thing. Oh, we didn't do it. No. All right. What is the domain? Yeah, exactly. Starts at negative 1. I kind of wrote it over here, didn't I? X is greater than or equal to negative 1. What is the range? Zero. Greater than or equal to zero, again, starts at zero going up. I guess I'm going to get a new page. So we... As you were turning around. All right, number 15. values should work on this one. Zero, one four. Yeah, just like the first problems, because it's just a basic square root of x. Uh, do you guys have a guess what the 2 is going to do to the graph? I don't know if we, yeah, we talked about something like that before. Go faster? It's going to make everything twice as tall as it would have been, yeah. So we can count by 2s? No. Okay, if I plug in 0, square root of 0 is 0 times 2 is 0. If I plug in 1, square root of 1 is 1, times 2 is 2. Plug in 4, square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4. So 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 4. So it is going up quite a bit faster, twice as fast.
kind of like number nine, right? Because it's going from zero forever this way, and the y is going from zero forever this way. So the same answer is number nine. Number zero. What is, how do you, okay, how do you find the range? It's a y values. Going from zero forever up. So we kind of already talked about this, but what is going to happen to the graph on 17? What's the minus 3 going to do to the graph? <clears throat> right 3 and F1. That is correct. All right. What x values would be good to plug in? So I need x minus 3 to be at least 0, greater than or equal to 0. So I need my x values to be greater than or equal to 3, right? Because 3 would make this 0. So plugging in 3 would work. If I plug in 4, that would work pretty well. And how do I make this equal to a 4? x equals 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 has a square root, a nice square root. So those are nice numbers. 3 minus 3 is 0, squared of 0 is 0, plus 1, 1. 4 minus 3 is 1, squared of 1 is 1, plus 1. 7 minus 3 is 4, squared of 4 is 2, plus 1. So we're starting at 3, 1. Okay, what's the domain? Oh, that's right. They move set of new set of directions. Okay, nineteen. So it's the square root of x plus two plus one. So these are what square roots look like. What do you guys think a cube root graph would look like? It'd be flatter over here, but it, since cube roots can be negative, it actually goes backwards too. Well, well, like that's that. Weird. That's well, that's cool. It's like a square root, but flatter, and it has negatives. Cube roots can have negatives, so they go backwards also. Anyway. That's gone. All right. Last odd. What's the lowest x value I could use right here? Negative 2. And then if I did negative 1, that would work pretty well. Then how do I make this equal to 4? x equals 2. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 
Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2 plus 1. Negative 2, 1. Negative 1, 2. Get out of here without your homework. Go, go, go. Emily's in the zone. <laughs> <laughs>